My name is Carol Horsley and I would like to welcome you and familiar faces here today where Father Wynne celebrates Mass with us. Something to think about today and during the week. At the end of the day, what really matters is that your loved ones are well. You've done your best and that you're thankful for all you have. Please stand as we sing together. So please 
keep me in your prayer, keep my grandfather in your prayer, and also I'll keep you in my prayer too. And I'll ask other people in the parish that we're going to uh, give them the, um, the donation, the uh, machine, ask them to pray for you too. And uh, today is the, the Father Day, so I wish you all fathers have a big, have a happy Father Day, and also have a joyful day with family. Thank you so much, Father. Delighted to be able to do that. Remember, you do have our prayers too, for you, your family, and your grandfather especially. If you don't know me, you must be new here. <laughs> I went to school here in the 1960s, and my first appointment after ordination was back to St. Pat's High School here in Timaru for a number of years, so I taught here. My brother lives locally as well, so I'm backwards and forwards. I'm here pretty regularly just to check up and see if things are going well. There's many things to pray for today. Remember our dads, living and dead, especially Mother Wynne's grandmother, and all those others that we want to pray for, especially those who are sick. So that we pray well, let's first call to mind God's wonderful mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you have revealed yourself as the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. You have poured out on your people the spirit of truth. Christ, have mercy. And you are the good shepherd leading us to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, my almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
A reading from the book of Ecclesiasticus. My son, be gentle in carrying out your business, and you will be better loved than a lavish giver. The greater you are, the more you should behave humbly, and then you will find favour with the Lord. For great though the power of the Lord is, he accepts the homage of the humble. There is no cure for the proud man's malady, since an evil growth has taken root in him. <coughs> the heart of a sensible man will reflect on parables, and a tent of ear is the sage's dream. The word of the Lord. <laughs>
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. On the seventh day, Jesus had gone for a meal in the house of one of the leading Pharisees. And they watched him closely. He then told the guests a parable because he had noticed how they picked the places of honour. He said this, When someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not take your seat in the place of honour. A more distinguished person than you may have been invited, and the person who invited you both may come and say, Give up your place to this man. And then to your embarrassment, you would have to go and take the lowest place. No, when you are a guest, make your way to the lowest place and sit there. So that when your host comes, he may say, My friend, move up higher. And that way, everyone will, with you at the table will see you on it. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and the person who humbles themselves will be exalted. And he said to his host, When you give a lunch or a dinner, do not ask your friends, brothers, relations, or rich neighbors, for fear they repay your courtesy by inviting you in return. No, when you have a party, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind. That they cannot pay you back means that you are fortunate, because repayment will be made to you when the virtuous rise again. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Over the years as a priest, I've been to quite a few funerals. Many of them I've done myself. One of the extraordinary things I've noticed, though, that at funerals, people will get up and pay a tribute or a eulogy and speak of the person for whom we have gathered to come in to God. Sometimes the person whose funeral I'm doing, I've known for a long time and known them very well. But the thing that amazes me sometimes is when people get up to speak about them, tell you about them in their lives, they will tell me something I didn't know about the person I thought I know you well. Often something very good that they did very quietly. They were involved in this, that or another charity or helped out somebody in special ways, helped out others in special ways that I knew nothing about. Their kindness the generosity was being acknowledged at their funeral. This is what Jesus is talking about. Those people who want to make sure that we know who they are and exactly what they do and how well they do it and how much praise we should heap upon them, the Lord say, no. That's not the way. The way we do things is quietly. We help out people in such a way as to do good for them, to bring the best out of them, with no reflection necessarily on ourselves. We do good, but we don't have a band to play us in to, so people will notice. And that's the way we as followers of Jesus are asked to do it. Because our world today seems to want to attract a lot of attention to anybody that does something 
good or bad, and give them a lot of notice. And Jesus is saying, no. The best way to help others is to do it quietly, sincerely, at the best of our ability. Because, as he reminds us, our repayment is in heaven. God repays us. <coughs> the attention others give us is passing. But Jesus himself proved a week before he died, he rode into Jerusalem in triumph. Within a week, he was crucified. Human beings are fickle. God isn't. When we face God, we only take two things with us. You never see a hearse towing a trailer. All we take to God is our integrity and our consciences. So, think for a moment. When each one of us is going to have a turn at something, we're all going to die. If we're lucky, we'll get a funeral. Some people aren't so lucky these days. When people want to say things, the question you don't need to think about but it's going to happen, we might wonder, what is it that people will say about us? But more importantly, what is God going to say to us when he welcomes us into his kingdom? Gift, the gift of faith. So together now let us profess our faith. And together we say, I believe in God. Lord. 
Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the protection of all life for con from conception to natural death. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, you are the resurrection and the life. Welcome our deceased into your heavenly kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our Lord God, you have heard our prayers. You know the prayers in our hearts. And we ask you to grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Lord, may the sacred offering confer on us always the blessing of salvation. But what is celebrates in mystery and may accomplish in power. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. To lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and every day to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. We 
so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us, the Redeemer, to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son. By whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we have lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. when the supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the best thing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Thomas and with all the saints, 
and his constant intercession in your presence, we rely for our unfailing help. Let this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, we order our bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family who have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed sisters and brothers, especially those we are praying for today, and to all who are pleasing to you as they are passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever.
we pray, Lord, renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we ask that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you and our neighbour. And we ask this through Christ. Amen. Amen. I come simply to promote the, um, the play, Matthew, Mark, Luke and Joanne, which will be on Tuesday the 10th, so eight days away. Um, it's a fundraiser for our parish, but it is a, and even it is solely for our parish, so even if you can only come on your own, you will be amongst friends. The tickets are $30, which is including the play and some nibbles. And they will be on sale outside as you leave, or any morning this week, not Monday, but from Helen at the office, Tuesday to Friday. So we look forward to seeing you, we look forward to having the theatre full, and we look forward to a really good night. Thank you, Phil.